so now we'll talk more about the water hydrogen bonding so when we compare between water and ice water and ice both are having hydrogen bonds and ice is a open structure water is a molecule that is tetrahedrally hydrogen bonded and when we look at the density the density of water is greater than ice and that is why ice floats on water so the density of ice is 0.92 grams per ml and water is 1 gram per ml so that is why when we are weighing also suppose if we want 1 gram we can just add 1 ml of water that will be equivalent to 1 gram we shall discuss few of the properties of water first one is cohesion secondly adhesion a d h e s i o n so cohesion is when one water, water molecule gets attracted to other water molecule and adhesion is when water molecule gets attracted to other substances other substances such as a straw or when it's raining the water droplets get attached to the windows so all this is because of adhesion and we look at cohesion and adhesion as a result of hydrogen bonding because hydrogen bonding is seen in water this hydrogen bonding is a sticky bond which makes water to come to close together and that is why they tend to stay together forming the cohesion and adhesion properties of water there is another interesting phenomenon called as the surface tension and because of this surface tension bugs can walk on water we see that few insects can walk on water this is because of surface tension and we also look at water droplets assuming a spherical shape a droplet shape and this droplet shape is because it possesses less surface tension and because of this surface tension we also see the sticking to the straws and windows another example is of methane methane is ch3 and water is h2 both methane and water are having same molecular weight and also hence they should have same boiling points but they do not have same boiling points and this difference in the boiling point is due to the hydrogen bonds if there are more hydrogen points boiling point will definitely increase and hence uh, boiling point of water is 100 degree celsius and boiling point of methane is minus 161.6 degrees celsius another interesting concept is the dielectric constant so the dielectric constant of water is approximately 80 that is 78.5 though let's take it as 80 and polar molecules always have high dielectric constant which is represented by capital d and there are no units for dielectric constant so dielectric constant means the ability to keep opposite charges apart so when there are opposite charges the ability to keep opposite charges i'll write it down ability to keep opposite charges apart is the dielectric constant and polar solvents have high electric dielectric constant because they form solvated shells or make an ion hydrated solvated shells in the sense if there is a negative suppose let's take nacl is na plus ncl minus when it is dissolved in water it dissociates completely into na plus and cl minus so around na plus because this is positively charged the oxygen molecules interacts with it which are negatively charged and they form a solvation shell around it wherein the hydrogen which is having positive positive charge are directed away from the sodium but the same hydrogen will interact with chlorine because these chlorine is negatively charged and hydrogen is positively charged 
So in this manner, a solvation shell is created around sodium and chlorine. So dielectric constant uh, is responsible for them because when solvation shells make an ion hydrated, dielectric constant also increases. Because the ion charges, whichever is present, they are spread over the volume and this will attenuate columbic forces between ions. Another reason for water having high dielectric constant is because the hydrogen bonds resist the random thermal movements. Random thermal movements. So now let's discuss some questions and the first question is hydrogen bonding is a type of so we have discussed that hydrogen bonding occurs between a donor and an acceptor pair right so when we uh, draw a water molecule we said this is partially negative charge and this is partially positively charged and hydrogen bonding is an intermolecular bonding that is between two molecules of water so now this is a hydrogen bonding and it's intermolecule hence it's a strong intermolecular force uh, they are asking whether it's a covalent bond see when it is inside a molecule between two atoms between oxygen and hydrogen which is having an electronegativity of 2.1 this is having an electronegativity of 3.5 which is giving a electronegativity of 0.9 and we have discussed that for a covalent bond to be polar uh, the electronegativity range should be between 0.5 and 2 hence this is going and uh, confining in this range hence this is a polar covalent bond and remember that is an intramolecular affair so it's not inter hence it is a hydrogen bonding is a type of strong intermolecular force next question is they are asking in which liquid is hydrogen bonding strongest so uh, firstly we have to look about the uh, trends in a periodic table when we go from left to right having boron carbon nitrogen oxygen and fluoron we see that the electronegativity increases as we move from left to right fluorine having the highest electronegativity and the rest having the electronegativity which is decreasing by a range of 0.5 and hydrogen is having an electronegativity of 2.1 so when we consider hydrogen fluoride we see that electronegativity difference is approximately 1.9 so that means it is having the strongest hydrogen bond strongest highest electronegativity gives rise to strongest hydrogen bond hence hf is a carrying the uh, highest and strongest hydrogen bonding the third question is when compared to hydrogen sulfide water is having a higher boiling point we already uh, have seen that for a liquid to have higher boiling point it should have more hydrogen bonds hence water contains stronger and more hydrogen bonds i'll also tell why it is stronger we have seen that if a bond has to be stronger, the electronegativity should be greater. And now when we compare H2S and H2O, the electronegativity of sulfur, which is right beneath oxygen, is 3. Sorry, 2.5. It decreases by a range of 1. So it is 2.5 minus 2.1, which is approximately 0 0.4. And now this comes also under non-polar covalent bond because it is less than 0.5 the electronegativity but when we look at water it is 3.5 minus 2.1 which is approximately 0.9 which is having a polar covalent bond and because electronegativity is higher it is having stronger bonds So now let's discuss about some more questions and I have picked up these questions from Pathfinders test and evaluation. So the first question is, which of the following element is least abundant? That means which is present in less quantities in our body. So when we look at all of this, oxygen makes up about 65% of the total body volume. 
because oxygen is present in the form of water and it is also present in almost all the biomolecules such as fats, lipids, proteins, DNA, RNA. And then next to oxygen, uh, we have hydrogen. Hydrogen is also forming up the water, which is approximately 10%. And carbon is making up the body. So almost all of the biomolecules are having carbon as their backbone. But when you look at the phosphorus, phosphorus is only 1% of the total body volume because it is a trace element. So the answer is C. So when we look at a polar molecule, so it is, it is asking us to describe what a polar molecule is. It is slightly negative at one end and slightly positive at other end. Yes, because we have slightly positive charge at one end and slightly negative charge at one end. And this is what makes a polar molecule. It has an extra electron giving it a negative charge, no. It has an extra neutron, no. It has covalent bonds, no. So the first option is correct for this. Next, which of the following property is not related to water? Yes, water is having high dielectric constant that is approximately 80 because of the hydrogen bonds. Yes, it is dipolar in nature because it is having partial positive charge near hydrogen and partial negative charge near oxygen. Yes, it is angular in shape with an angle of 104.5 and low heat of vaporization. So uh, we see that heat of vaporization is high in water. So heat of vaporization is the energy which is required to convert one gram of liquid into a gas at boiling point. And it is having uh, here more energy is required because more hydrogen bonds are present. It's not easier to break hydrogen bonds. Hence, as more energy is required, it is having more heat of vaporization. And as they are asking, which is not related to water, and we know that these three are right answers. So this is a wrong answer. Now they are asking which of the following statements are correct. Polarity of water makes it an excellent solvent. Yes. Water is polar. Water has high tensile strength. Yes. Cohesive property of water is due to hydrogen bonding. Yes. And water is having high electric constant. Yes. So all of them are correct. Now, which non-covalent bond is responsible for the high melting and boiling point of water? Non-covalent bond is a hydrogen bond. Because we know that not all of these three are non-covalent bonds and this is a covalent bond. But they are asking responsible for high melting and boiling point. Everything is responsible because of hydrogen bonds. In which of the following systems is the entropy the greatest? It is water vapor.